So a little bit of background. Um, I think most people have heard a lot about security uh, in the last, well, few years, really. Um, we had like a Biden's executive order that, uh, on cybersecurity. I think the solar winds attack is still driving a lot of what's going on because that was a very sort of sophisticated attack. And I think other people um, are aware that, you know, they wouldn't have been able to stop it either. Um, we've also had a you know, log4j nightmare that's rolled on and on. Um, and a lot of these attacks have had to do with dependencies uh, and third party code we use, or in other words, with our supply chains. Um, and here's a report from Sunatype in 2021. Um, I'm not entirely sure what numbers they're using, but they came up with uh, a 650% year over year increase in terms of supply chain attacks, which they've classified here as dependency confusion. So presumably when an attacker gives you perhaps an out of date version of a dependency or a malicious version of dependency. Um, typo squatting, which um, you probably know, like if you fat finger dependency, then an attacker can give you perhaps something that looks like it does the same, but also there's something malicious behind the scenes uh, and then simply malicious code injection. There we go. So uh, if there's one takeaway I'd like you to take from this talk, it would just be to think about these two questions. So if you're in charge of a Kubernetes cluster, um, do you know what's running in that cluster? As in, you know, if you look to do a kubectl git pods, um, can you name all the pods? And can, can you look at them and tell what they are, like what they're running, if it's Nginx, if it's your microservice front end, if it's a Kubernetes system pod? Um, can you tell who created them? Can you tell if they're out of date? And can you tell exactly which um, version of the source code they was? So the actual git commit that was used to build them. Um, and perhaps more interestingly, how much of that can you prove? Can you prove that that uh, container is running your code and it hasn't changed since it was built? Or is it possible that somebody's, uh, you know, an attacker is running a different pod with the same name as one of your pods or somehow tampered with the code on the way to a deployment? And most people struggle to answer those questions, frankly. Um, but one way to get, it is possible to like answer those questions definitively, but it's, it's actually really quite hard. Um, but one of the first steps we can take is by signing our images. And this gives us a lot more trust that what we're running is what we think we're running, or came from who we think it came from at least. Um, so signing the image is pretty simple. Uh, it's just it's about verifying the source of your images. Uh, I think most of you are probably roughly aware it's basically this idea of having a public and private key. Um, we can sign things with a private key. Uh, so for example, with images, you can sign the SHA digest of an image. Um, and then other people can use the public key to um, decrypt that and, and look at the SHA of the image. And if that SHA matches, then you've now verified that that image was signed by whoever had access to the private part of the key. Um, there is a lot more to security and supply chain security than just signing, um, but you know, signing is a good start. Um, other things you can look at, things like reproducibility, running vulnerability scanners, etc. So how can you sign images? Uh, there's two ways roughly at the minute. Um, so there's notary, uh, some of you probably remember Notary version one, uh, which you know was largely Docker or started off as a Docker project, uh, and it was pretty cool. Like it did all this the update framework stuff, but it was also kind of complicated. And a big drawback was you had to like spin up your own Notary server, which was you know a bit of a pain. So they went back to the drawing board and they come up with Notary v2. Um, I don't really have much updates on that, but I am aware that Microsoft are working on it. So there's probably a few people here that know a lot more about it. Um, you can come and check me afterwards. However, what we do have, and what I'm going to talk about today, is SigStore. So SigStore's here and it works, and you can use it today. Um, rather than store images, rather than store your signatures in a separate service, uh, you just store the, the, the signatures alongside the images in the registry, or you can actually store them in a separate registry, but they just become blobs in a normal OCI registry, like, like the Docker Hub, for example. Um, it is being very rapidly adopted. Um, there's uh, a big milestone the other week where the Kubernetes releases are now signed with SigStore, so that was pretty great. 
Um, and it is a Linux Foundation project. So the company I work for, ChainGuard, um, are heavily involved in it, but there's also other people like Red Hat and Google, and I can't name the others, but we'll keep going. Um, then, um, yeah, Caverno. So just signing things is kind of pointless, right? You have to do something with those signatures for it to be worthwhile. Um, so I'm going to show you a demo. Most of this talk is going to be a demo. Um, and in the demo at the end, what we'll do is we'll use Caverno to verify that the images inside our cluster are in fact signed. Um, yeah, Caverno is a CNCF sand pro box project. Um, you can use other solutions. Um, a lot of people use OPA or OPA. Um, we also released a commercial one uh, recently called Chain Garden Force that will do like policy uh, enforcement for Kubernetes clusters. And because it's a commercial project, I won't talk any more about that at the minute, though. Okay. Now, some of you might be following me on Twitter. I have had like an interest in the last 24 hours, and I've not had much luck. So I suspect this could go horribly wrong, but we're going to try and do a demo anyway. Yeah, if I can even find a mouse point. There we go. So from there, oh, didn't mean to do that. No, no, that's not a good start. Uh, take this out of full screen, maybe. Why is it not working? I had it. Is it hidden? No, uh, it's on this one. Where did I get rid of it? There we go. See, it's behind that. Okay, here we go. We'll get there. Right, so, when did that work? Here we go. So the main command that you use to work with SigStore is Cosign. SigStore is made up of like three sort of projects. There's Cosign, uh, Record, and Fosio. And I'll explain how they're all related in a minute. But as a developer, the main one you're going to be using is Cosign. Is this big enough? Do you want it a bit bigger? Bigger. Is that any better? It's not that much bigger. Okay. I'll probably start running out of room soon. Right. So, I'm probably, let me delete. I did do a run through before and I've not tied up because. Um, okay. Um, so, I'm not doing cosine sign, I'm doing cosine generate. What has been pointing to? Oh, come on. Right. So this is a problem with me not um, mirroring the screens now. Anyway. So there's a generate key pair um, command, which will unsurprisingly generate a uh, public private key pair, if I spell it correctly, yes. Um, that's right. um, and also, um, the reason I want to show the help was just because you can like pass, ask it to store things and stuff like, um, AWS KMS, Google Cloud KMS, HashiCorp Vault, and so on. So you can store your keys there if you want. Um, we're not going to do that. We're just going to do the default, which is to store it in the current directory. Oh, jeez. Password. Okay, and so that's created two files, a uh, private key, cosine key, and the, the public key, cosine the pub. And it kind of looks like that. I think it's a ecliptic curve cryptography underneath the hood, but that's beyond my pay grade. So now we have a cosine and we've got a key pair. We want to sign something. So I'm just going to pull an image from the Docker Hub and pull this already so it should be quick. Yeah, um, and then we can tag it. So 
There's no way I'm going to spell rejects right every time. Um, can you see the whole of the screen? The people struggling to see it? Okay, I'll keep going. Um, so, now this actually won't work, but I'm going to show you anyway. Because it kind of explains what's going on a little bit. So, assuming I spelled everything right, and um, this still won't work. Um, well, because I'm not doing sign, but apart from that, Because what's happened here is Cosine's gone off to the Docker Hub and said, hey, there's no image in the Docker Hub ca called this. Do um, Cosine doesn't care at all about my lo local like, Docker images and so on. In fact, you don't need to have Docker installed at all to use Cosine. Um, so what we need to do is push that image. And let's hope this works. And hopefully it won't take too long. And now we should be able to sign it. Uh, I'm using that uh, public key to sign this image, and that's being pushed as a blob into the Docker Hub. Um, so to make it a little bit clearer, uh, where was I? Yeah. So the next thing you want to do is um, verify. So what we can do is dash dash key cosine. This time use the public part of the key. Did I spell that right? Yeah, and so that has validated, make it a little bit nicer. So this part is literally the payload. Um, and you'll notice, like, I was using the tag rejects. Yeah, I was using the tag rejects, but that doesn't actually appear here. All that appears is the reference of to the repository and the digest of the image. Because, of course, you know, you're Tags can end up pointing to different things, so what we actually sign is a digest. Um, cool, and that's verified against the public key I use. And so the next question you might have is, well, hang on, where is this stored? Because you can't store things in the image itself currently. Hmm. So there's a triangulate command, which is kind of handy, because it'll tell me Okay, you've got this emote cosine demo rejects. Um, no, scrolled off the end. How do I get that? Hmm. Why is it off the end? Okay, that's better. Right, and so th basically, it stored this blob with this dot sig extension, and the rest of it is actually the the SHA-256 digest of the image, so it should be the same as that. So that's kind of how it stores stuff next to it in the registry and how it finds the, the images. Okay, um, the next interesting thing, actually I can just do this. So we can try adding annotations. Where's that? Because oh, I pushed up. We can add annotations to an image. So if I do env equals prod, so we could say, okay, I'm saying um, I'm only interested. I can add, okay. In this case, I'm going to add an annotation that says this image perhaps is marked so it can run in a production environment as opposed to development environment. It's just an example. So I've added this dash a annotation, env equals prod, and I've pushed this. It'll just add another. Um, whole payload um, on top of the other one, it doesn't like merge them. And then what we can do 
is if we run verify again, we should see our annotation in the payload. Yeah, there you go. Um, and then you can even start saying things like, well, okay, I want you to verify, but I'm only interested if the image has been marked as being able to run in prod. So that should come up with just that one annotation. Yeah. Um, and just to prove that it does work, if I do like dev equals prod, uh, nothing's going to come up. Well, an error will come up. Um, okay, but now it's for the really cool bit, because I don't know about you, but I hate having to deal with like secrets. And uh, you know, the big problem with a whole bunch of the science stuff is you end up with these like private keys you've got to keep safe. If somebody else gets them, it's a disaster. Um, trying to like change them and rotate them is a nightmare. And yeah, it's just really not a good time to be perfectly honest. And frankly, I think it's the main reason that we don't do more signing and checking of stuff. So what I can do is... Just to cut to the chase, six-store event, six-store event helps give either the bypass that process where you have to I'm going to show you right now. Patience. Oh, I meant to pull an image first, sorry. So if I do Docker, pull, so we'll use a new image. We'll have to target something. So my mind was kind of blown when I saw this for the first time. I thought it was pretty cool. Basically, if we turn on cosine experimental equals one, and um, this time I'm going to type sign, but I'm not even going to specify a private key. If I didn't have the experimental one at the minute, I would throw an error and say I don't have any key. But we put this on, and we're going to try the keyless signing. Um, uh, what did I do? Sing. So, if we're lucky, and what's the browser going to be open to? Mm. It's probably a browser behind this. So, yes, there you go. So, when I type that in, what it's done is it's opened up um, the browser and asked me to, to uh, select an open ID provider to use. So, I'm going to use GitHub. And that's done that. Why can't I just tab back? That's really annoying. I'm being stupid. Where's my tabs? Oof. What? Hmm. Well, it's because it's full screen. Okay. Um, anyway. Uh, oh, I didn't push that. That was help. So that didn't actually work. After all that, because I didn't do Docker push. I've not had much sleep. Okay, let's try that again. Hang on. Let me get this over here. I'm actually asking about here. I'm like, it's about here. Can I close it? Will I close everything? No. Good. Right. So that worked that time. So hopefully. I still don't understand why I can't tab. Right. That has worked this time. Uh, and we've now signed it, and there was no keys involved. But it did ask me to validate against an open ID 
Connect server. Now, this does get a little bit complicated. Um, let's see if I can, well, that worked that way. So this is kind of what was going on. Uh, so the first thing to be aware of, we call it keyless signing. I kind of hate that name in the same way that I hate the name serverless. But it's exactly the same idea, right? You know in serverless, you have, well, they say you've got no servers, but obviously you do have servers, it's just that you don't have to deal with them. In keyless signing, um, it's exactly the same, there are keys, you just don't have to deal with them. Um, so what's basically happening is, as a developer, um, I can request a certificate from the Full Seal Certificate Authority, which is what effectively we're doing there. Um, and to do that, we authenticated with OpenID. Oh, we authenticated with OpenID Connect, um, which basically meant Full Seal had sort of authority that we, oh, geez, <laughs> that we had um, control over like, whichever email address is associated with an OpenID account thing. So if you go and look at the verification data, I should have done that actually, um, you'll see that it talks about my email address um, because that's sort of what's been used to sign it. Um, yeah, so Fossil gave us a signed certificate based on that data, which we then used to sign an artifact and send it. Now, both the certificate that Fossil created was pushed to this record transparency log and the fact that it was signed on a certain date and time so what that means is end users can now, um, if they download my artifact or whatever has been signed the image, um, they can validate uh, that it is in the record transparency log and that it was signed with a trust route that coming from Tulsio. Um, now, the reason that we're interested in the record transparency log part is because it provides some protection against um, things going wrong with OpenID Connect effectively. And also, um, if, for example, an attacker does get control of somebody's account, because it's in this transparency log, um, hopefully somebody might notice at some point and there is a record of things. Um, the transparency log is exactly the same idea as a certificate transparency, um, if, you know, if you're aware of that from like the previous domain hacks and so on. Um, okay. What do I also want to show? I'm not sure I'm going to get to the end. Uh, I took too long on my demo, I apologize. Uh, that was the most interesting bit though. If you can get it full screen. Jeez. There we go. Um, so what I should have done was verify. Again, you still need to leave that in. Hmm, and now the Wi-Fi isn't working. Okay, um, I'm going to show you the last part. Uh, I don't think, we, oh, there we go. Okay, and of course I didn't run that through JQ, so you can't really see anything. But thankfully, the most interesting bit perhaps is at the bottom, because we do have subject, and then my email down here. So that's kind of the level of guarantee you're sort of getting, that this um, artifact was signed by somebody with access to this email, or yeah, kind of with access to this email account um, at this date. I think there's also a date up here. Um, the other thing I was going to show, but I need to cut things short, I think, is Kyverno as policy management. Uh, so I do believe there's a new version of Kyverno coming out that will support keyless signing and so on, um, but I just wanted to show, um, if you apply this policy, basically what we're saying is all images from Docker.io, a moat must have a signature and you can specify a public key. Um, and this you know, I would copy from the cosign at pub. Um, and that does work. Uh, I think we're out of time. I just want to go back to the final slide.
Um, what? Yeah. So, takeaways, please. Okay. Takeaways, please. Uh, think about the two questions I posed at the start. Do you know what's running in your cluster, and can you prove it? Sign images is pretty important. Um, I think the keyless sign is pretty cool um, and solves a lot of problems. Uh, do remember to check your signatures. Um, and yeah, please go away and sign things. Um, thank you very much.